Hi folks and welcome back. Where we left off yesterday we were talking about waste spark ignition system which is a form of a distributorless ignition system. What we have here today is known as a coil on plug ignition system. So we're looking under the hood of a 2011 Ford Taurus right here. This is our front bank of three cylinders. It's a V6 engine and what we see here one, two, three ignition coils. In the back of the engine underneath the intake manifold there'd be three more which we probably can't see too well. You can just sort of, sort of see the hint of one right there. So in this system we put a dedicated ignition coil on top of every single spark plug. So it's not a waste spark system. There's no reason to fire this coil twice. We don't need to send a spark needlessly on the exhaust stroke. So we're only going to fire this at TDC on the compression stroke. And uh, I'm just going to show you what it takes to take this coil out. And we're going to inspect the coil and inspect the spark plug. So... First off, this crankcase breather tube needs to get out of our way. If we look close down here, this little gray plastic tab, we can kind of lift this up and flip it over. That's a lock. After we do that, this lifts up. If you look on the other end, where it hooks into the air cleaner tube, there's actually no reason to disconnect that. We can just swing this up out of our way. So you've got to kind of think like a flat rate tech sometimes. Don't disturb anything that doesn't need to be disturbed. Okay, when we look down here, I'm just going to take one coil out. This little red plastic piece in the connector is a locking tab that needs to be slid back. And it's probably a little too stiff for me to do with my thumb. Yep. So I'm actually going to use my spark plug gap tool, just because it's here and it's handy. I'm actually going to set this camera down right here, and you should still be able to see. There we go. Once that's slid back and it clicks, I can push down on this little black tab. That's the lock. We push down on that black tab, give the connector a little wiggle, and it'll unplug. This is the low voltage side, or our primary side of the coil. Now we're going to take an 8mm socket and remove that bolt. See, can you see my, yep, you can see my ratchet in there? Take the bolt out and set it aside. Place that right there. Lift straight up on this coil, give it a little wiggle. You hear kind of a popping sound, that's the seal being broken, that's a good thing. So, here's our ignition coil. This is known as a COP, or a coil on plug. So this is a direct ignition. Basically this coil sits directly on the spark plug and delivers the high voltage right to the plug. You can see the primary terminals in there. If I zoom in a little. Two little pins in there, positive and negative. We're going to set the coil aside for now. Take our spark plug socket on an extension. Put that down into the tube. Now we can unscrew this spark plug here. Okay, so my spark plug socket didn't uh, extract the plug. We'll try it again. I just didn't unscrew it far enough. Sometimes the rubber insert in the spark plug socket doesn't uh, get a good grab on the plug anymore. Okay. And there went my ratchet. Okay, so here's the spark plug. I already mentioned it's a Ford Taurus. And as we learned in a previous lesson, a Motorcraft plug or an Autolite plug would be what we expect to find in here. You notice on the top of this plug there's a dab of green paint. That indicates this is the factory plug. When you pull the factory original um, OEM plug out of a Ford, you're going to see a paint mark that was put on at the factory when they assembled it. Look at the firing end of this plug. See a nice light gray, kind of whitish color. That's exactly what we want to see. No excessive buildup of deposits or anything like that. I don't know if I can get close enough to the camera to get good detail and stay in focus. Yeah, I can. But you might notice... That our ground electrode or our side electrode is starting to get kind of thin towards the tip. That's erosion. That's caused from the sparks happening repeatedly over thousands of miles. So this, this plug is ready to be replaced just visually. I'd actually like to see what the gap is. So here's my gap checking tool. We're going to use the uh, standard side and use the inch side. So slide that up in the gap. Kind of gently wiggle it and see how large it is. And it's 
pretty worn. We're up almost at 70 thousandths of an inch, so gap's kind of large on this plug. This, this plug's ready to be changed, so this car actually needs a set of spark plugs. For the moment, I'm just going to put this one back in. We'll change these at another time. This actually happens to be my mother's car. I didn't have anything suitable in my fleet to take a video on. One other thing I should mention on this spark plug, we talked about it in the spark plug video. Right here, where the spark plug goes into the cylinder head, notice there's no gasket there. There's no little washer. This has what's called a tapered seat. The style of seat determines how tight you screw this into the engine. On a tapered seat plug, you basically screw it in until it's hand tight, and you go about a sixteenth of a turn more. There is actually a torque spec. It's usually somewhere in the 13 to 15 foot-pound range. Not very tight. Another thing on putting spark plugs in, when we put the spark plug into the engine, you want to start this by hand, no ratchet. If you have a ratchet on there, that increases your leverage, and that increases the chances that you're going to cross-thread this plug and strip the threads in the aluminum head. So, drop that down into the tube, thread it in by hand. If you get any resistance, if it fights you, something's wrong. Kind of snug. Okay, that's as far as I can turn it by hand. Now I'm going to put my ratchet on there. Okay, so right now the handle of my ratchet's over here. It doesn't look it in the camera, but it's at about nine o'clock. All right, so sixteenth uh, of a turn would be maybe not even quite to ten o'clock. About that far. That's it. So pull that back out. When I actually go back in here to change the spark plugs, I'm also going to bring over with me a tube of dielectric grease. It's a silicone grease. We're going to put a little dab in here. What that helps prevent is moisture from getting into this boot, and it also helps prevent uh, the high voltage from arcing from in here down the side of the spark plug and arcing to the, the hex or the shell of the plug rather than actually jumping at the gap in the, in the cylinder. So a little bit of dielectric grease in here to prevent that from happening. And one last thing I should mention before we wrap up this video. This tube here is part of the cylinder head and where it uh, where it meets with the valve cover there's actually a seal in here. There's a, there's a black rubber seal and that keeps oil fr from underneath the valve cover from making its way both out to the atmosphere and down into that tube. So if you ever pull a coil off or pull a spark plug wire off and you see down in the tube that it's all full of oil that indicates that that seal has gone bad. So you need to buy a valve cover gasket set clean up everything around, remove the valve cover, and change those seals. So that's a, that's a common issue. All right, so that's about it for now. We're going to put our coil back in, push it down straight, set my camera back down. This is a tiny little bolt, by the way. This is a 5 millimeter thread. This is not a bolt you should be screwing in with a 3 8 long handle ratchet, because you are going to snap it off. I've seen it many times in shop. So again, putting this in hand tight. Notice my little bitty quarter drive ratchet. Snug that up. Snug. Not 80 foot pounds. This does not hold the wheel on. All right. Put our connector back on. This should snap on. Here's a little click. After you click it, you should give it a little tug and make sure that it actually did snap into place. And last but not least, push our lock tab back up in. And put our breather hose back on. This just clicks in place so we don't have an air leak. Okay, so when I get back to my house, you'll see me out in the garage again on the whiteboard, and I'm going to explain how this ignition system differs technically from a waste spark system and uh, what it takes to control and run this thing.